Christmas is just weeks away and the Baltimore Police Department is making sure that every child in the city gets to unwrap a gift. The department held its annual Toys for Tots drive today, handing out hundreds of gifts to kids. This year was a little bit different than normal because families had to drive up to collect their toys, but the impact is still the same. Many times, some of them may not be able to, to get the kind of toys or even any toy at all. So thank you for Toys for Tots for making this possible and thank all of them for making this possible. Toys for Tots has donated toys to kids across the country every year now since 1947. Well, Major League Baseball players are part of a nationwide effort to support communities hit the hardest by the pandemic, and studies show that communities of color have been particularly affected. 11 News reporter Trey Ward has a look at the work they're doing. Doing their part one by one at Stadium Place in North Baltimore Saturday morning. This is where the Orioles and the Colts used to play. This is the former Memorial Stadium site, so what better place? Helping out those in need, in particular the black community, left reeling from a devastating blow handed down by COVID-19. We see that it's needed, and these people, like I said, they're, they're happy to see us come around and to see that we care and that we're there for them during these troubled times. According to the CDC, black people are almost 2% more likely to contract COVID-19, nearly 4% more likely to be hospitalized, and about 3% likelier to pass away from COVID complications. With those revealing numbers, the Players Alliance, a nonprofit made up of more than 100 black baseball players with volunteers participating in a first-of-its-kind cross-country event called Pull Up Neighbor. 33 city tour in two months, and we're going around these cities and having a pop-up pantry. We're giving away uh, shirts, we're giving away PPEs, and uh, food boxes and stuff like that. Essential things. It's an effort backed by $1 million raised by former and active baseball players with another million matched in supplies from Major League Baseball. You know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. You know, um, it's just, I think that right now it's a perfect time for all of us to understand what we have that's special, uh, what we can do to impact our, to help ourselves, and what we can do to impact uh, others. We spoke with former Orioles players, Chris Dickerson and Adam Jones, about their support in the program and how COVID-19 exposed the disparities in the black community. We're at this point where this attitude where we can't keep ignoring the, the, the pain and, you know, the, of the inner city community and the, the lack of resources, the gross lack of resources that, that these communities have. And the event will continue across the country until late next month. I'm Trey Ward, WBAL-TV, 11 News. Well, still ahead on 11 News at 10 tonight, President Trump holds one last rally, this time in Georgia, to try and help Republicans keep control of the Senate. And later on, how a Baltimore DJ who became a pandemic sensation is using his music to help make the holidays bright when we come back.
Well, President Trump is in Georgia tonight rallying in support of two Republican senators for the two Senate seats up for grabs. But as Meredith Wood reports, some of the president's criticism towards Georgia's governor could do more harm than good. We've never lost an election. We're winning this election. President Trump made a stop in Georgia Saturday evening. This is something that's very important and you have to get out and you have to vote. You have to make sure you have every vote counted. He was there to support the two Republican senators, Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, ahead of the January 5th runoff election for key seats in the Senate. But leading up to his appearance, the president has been critical of Georgia's Republican Governor Brian Kemp. Even hours before arriving, accusing him of not doing enough to protest the election results in the state. And according to sources, Trump called Kemp Saturday, asking him to convince state legislators to overturn President-elect Joe Biden's win in the state, which has already been certified last month after a hand recount. The audit was required by state law, and the results gave Biden the win with more than 12,000 votes. On the call, Trump asked Kemp to hold a special session to convince state legislators to select their own electors that would support him. Trump also asked the Georgia governor to order an audit of absentee ballot signatures. Kemp explained that he did not have the authority to order such an audit. And